everyone, this is Vicki from Muncie Table Studio with a video about what I did to my black and white idea book. I want to put a belly band on it because it's a rather chunky baby. And I want to make sure it doesn't develop alligator mouth already more than what it already has. Um, I'm going to do a voiceover for parts of the video that I didn't talk. I was watching a movie while I did this. And then I read some comments that people left me on the video hot for hashtag AJOS Abstract August, where people said they didn't like no music, but they liked the fact that I, they didn't like the fact even more that I didn't talk to the video. They'd rather hear me talk than to listen to music. And I, and in the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, you don't know what you said. <laughs> All right, so I measured around the fat baby and it was 19 inches. I had some book pages that were random out of a book I ripped up. I think I bought it at Dollar Tree for a buck. And I pulled the pages out and had a rubber band together in a drawer for my journal type stuff. I decided to uh, glue four of them end to end. And it worked great. Um, there I am wrapping it around again just to be sure that I have enough and I have more than enough. Now I save all my scraps for my scrapbook paper and my cardstock in the job tickets that mechanics use. Um, and then I put a label on each one of them. So I have one that's a black and white envelope for the cardstock and then I have a black and white one that's scrapbook paper and I do that with all the colors. After I had trimmed some edges off the scrapbook paper like, uh, you know, like there was a bump sticking out, a random bump somewhere. I did trim down my pieces into rectangles, squares, and triangles, and that kind of stuff with my paper trimmer. And then I just put them in a pile, and I'm randomly gluing them on everywhere on this paper. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Although, I say that, but I think I tried to keep things that were not, that didn't look good together away from each other and put them further down the line. I tried to make sure I had a good mix of the grays with the black and whites, and then the patterns with the solids. I've sped this up to four times because I think that took a little bit of a while for me to glue it all down, and I think I got interrupted by a dog, a husband, a doorbell, something a couple times, and um, I cut some of it out because there was no point in starting and stopping 50 times. I did enjoy gluing this. I, I got out four glue sticks, and I only ended up using one. So I thought that was wonderful, that it didn't take as much as I thought it would. I enjoyed doing it. I got a great satisfaction out of gluing. Okay, so this thing took less than half an hour to make. It's the four sheets, and it's way bigger than what I needed, but it's okay. I'm good with it because I will use it in other projects in the future. All it was, uh, let's see, and I didn't even use one glue stick all the way, so the, I over-anticipated how much glue it was going to take. So this was what was in an envelope. Let me get them all out here. This is in my black and white scrap envelope. And this is what I used to make this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I don't know if I have black thread or not, but I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew this all over the place like I've seen others do. And then the next part will come. Okay, so I'm going to show you these. These are ones that I did, I guess, a couple days ago where I just glued them onto book pages, smaller ones than the ones I use today. And then I just randomly sewed patterns, so like that one. This one is kind of zigzag with the zigzag. Then I did this one with a wider zigzag. I hope it doesn't get too blurry, sorry. And then I just did this one with the uh, straight stitch, and I think this is either eight or nine stitches to the inch. I think it's eight, because that 
I think might be a standard. I don't remember from sewing class. It's been like, you know, in the last century. <laughs> okay, so there's those. Super easy to make. And then I will doll these up later or, and I've already cut one of these down to make something else. So they're very useful. All right, so I'm going to try to figure out how thick I want this before I do a bunch of sewing on it. I want to make sure that I have the right measurements, and I think it was 19 inches, but doesn't matter. I'm looking for the thickness of the band. So I don't want to put a belly band this thick on my book because I love the cover. So I only want to do one that's maybe two inches, but I need to mark it so that I don't make it too long or too short and I don't want that to happen because too much work has gone into this. Alright, so I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to make my creases on um, the board but I'm going to do all that after I finish sewing. So I'm going to cut, I think I think I'm going to cut right here. So we need some big scissors. Now, after this, oops, see, something's coming unglued, so I need to give it a little touch-up. But I will do that later, or I can run it over with the sewing machine, which will capture it, and it'll be just fine. So instead of sewing more stuff on the smaller piece and wasting my thread, I'm going to go ahead and doll this one up, and, and, and then um, I will make the adjustments. I have to figure out how wide I want this. I don't know, three inches seems awful big, two doesn't seem quite big enough, so I think we're gonna go for, what, two and a half? I wonder if, t yeah, two, well, let me see what three inches looks like on here. Three inches does seem rather, yep, it's gonna be two and a half. So I'm gonna cut this at two and a half on my paper cutter, no I'm not, I'm gonna go back here and do it. All right, let's try this, let's get a bigger ruler. For those of you who have ruler phobia, <laughs> it'll be fine. So what I want to do is I want to take a pencil and I want to measure two and a half on here. And I think I'm going to use my quilt cutter, rotary cutter for this. Uh, there's three, two and a half. So I want to go down every so often and make a mark for two and a half so at least I know I'm kind of going straight. I do have one of those T rulers but unless this is perfectly straight here it doesn't always work the best. I've um, made a couple crooked choices by using that. <laughs> All right, so when I sew I'm only going to sew on the portion I cut off in my two and a half inches and I'll leave the rest of these for another day because when you cut something off of this, what'll happen is you'll do lovely edges around here and you end up cutting it off and then you gotta whip out the machine to finish the Forget it. So I'm gonna get what I need and do the edges in the middle and everywhere else in between so I don't have to drag out the machine just to make one line of sewing because I made a cut. So I will go ahead and do this. I need a longer ruler. This one's not going to cut it. Literally, it's not going to work. So I need something longer. I have about, like, you know, 10 million rulers here. All right, let's see what we got going here. I need to do it this way, and you're going to miss seeing some of it because it's just too stinking long. Put it here and here and here. And I'm sure this dulls my rotary cutter. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure it does dull it. I haven't used this one in a while. There is some cardstock in this. It's mostly scrapbook paper, but there are snippets of um, cardstock, so I thought maybe I better go over it. 
a little harder. There you go. So I knew I'd have to do it on the ends. Let me put this away. I do not want to cut myself. There we go. And then just do the end. Ta-da! All right, so this is going to get put away for another day. And then I'm going to turn off the camera, and I'm going to run and sew the dickens out of this thing, and I'll be right back. Okay, it took about 15, 20 minutes, and I went really crazy sewing it. And I like the way it looks. It's kind of random, and who cares sewing? Because that's all I know how to do. <laughs> um, I did go around it with a zigzag, and then... I decided to make sure the edge that the edges will stay good. That I went back through it with eight, eight uh, straight stitches per inch around the outside edges again. As you can see on the back, I did go a bit nutsy. <laughs> oh, I missed a spot. Darn. <laughs> um, the reason I quit is my bobbin ran out. <laughs> Okay, so I want to do a little trimming up here. Like this is sticking out just a little too far for me. Just kind of trim it up. I don't care if it's wonky. I just don't want it to stick out way crazy. Yep, that'll do it. Okay, so next, take my book. And you know, I just noticed that the book was the stitching was in white, and I did this in black. Oh well, phooey. Okay, so I think I will mark this here with the pencil, and this here with the pencil, because that's where I will put the creases. Let me scoot this up further for the folds. I'm just going to pinch this and then that will kind of be around there and then this should hold it just fine yay all right let me get the board and I'll put my creases in it that way it'll make it a whole lot easier to deal with and I know you're supposed to crease on one side and fold to the other but Honestly, I don't really care, but I'll give it a try. All right, so this one can go here. So that goes there. And it's, you know, when I was sewing this, I'm thinking, what would I liken this to the way it feels? It feels like a leather belt. It's stiff, but yet it's still soft. And look, I went off the edges here. <gasps> oh my, well, I don't know those paper scissors trim this little snippet off and pretend that you didn't see that. <laughs> a little too close to the fire there. All right, there's that one, that one, this one, and this one. Where did I do it? I know I did it here. So let's do that there. And I think the other one was right. Um, I don't know. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so this is the middle. Yep, it was. Okay, I see it now. Beep, 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 beep. Whoops, went off track. There we go. All right, let's see if this works. This is the biggest belly band I've ever made. Voila. Okay, so this belly band's going to be very different than others I've made in the past. And let me go get what I need, and then you're going to see why. this book is so chunky, I don't want to have to slide this belly band on and off. So I've decided on the larger squares of Velcro, because I think that will be the best thing to do for this. So I need to see how far in. I guess I'm going to do it right here on the edge. Put it in the middle. Is that a, let's see, is that gonna interfere with the edge? No, okay. And then, I 
gonna take this. I did this because I, I, if I ever want to open the book, I'd rather do it this way than to have to keep sliding and rubbing on here. I can always replace the belly band. This cover, I cannot replace. So, we're going to put this back on here. And then I'm going to come up with some kind of a design to go on the front, like I always like to do. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so this next part is where I found some larger piece, a larger piece of, um, I don't want to call it scrapbook paper, paper because actually it's cardstock quality, but it was in 12 by 12 that had been cut down for something else. And I decided that would be a nice thing. It has letters of the alphabet on it, and it looks different than the other stuff on the cover because I wanted something that would be black and white, but yet contrasted with the other stuff. Then I found another piece of black and white cardstock that um, had hearts on it. And I decided I wanted something to really stand out. I wanted to use one thing of color on the cover, and I figured the red heart was good. The yellow one was already printed on the cardstock. So I just colored it in with the Sharpie over the black, fussy cut it, Then I did the edges with the black uh, stays on ink. Yes, I could have put it upright, but it's not as visually interesting as it just goes straight up and down, so I tilted it. Then I decided that it was too flimsy for, you know, the Velcro taking it on and off. So I had some leftover chipboard, and this is real chipboard. This is not cereal box stuff. This is what you buy commercial chipboard. And just glued that on top of that piece of chipboard so that it would be a little more sturdy for opening and closing. I wish I had sewn it on there, but, you know, afterthoughts. So then I'm going to ink up the edges to cover up the brown from the chipboard. I notice it gets a little blurry here. It's because my, I guess I was moving too fast for the camera, although I don't know how that happened. <laughs> All right, so it fits. So I'm going to put some glue on there. And it is about the same width as the, um, as the, the, the part around it for the Velcro. And there, my friends, is my belly band for my black and white 